Right now, more than 23 million Americans are fighting an alcohol or drugs, is according to the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Administration. And Jennifer Jimenez, she was one of them. She is a beautiful actress, model, who is also a house manager on the reality TV show called Sober House, which profiles celebrities right after a stinted rehab. And in this clip, Jimenez is trying to track down a house member who has relapsed. Hello? Hi. I'm not in a position right now to go out searching for Seth. So the next best thing to do is to call one of the people that love him the most to go find him. Here's the deal. He said, um, I'm OK, although he's high. It looks like he has a loft there. It's like it's his loft. It's a loft. Didn't look like a hotel. Do you know is that his hangout? Like, you know what I mean? It was a dealer's house. Mm. And Jimenez has a lot of experience for the job because she has been fighting addiction herself. While a model in her teens, she attempted suicide, fighting her need for alcohol and drugs. And I just want to welcome her to the show. Jennifer Jimenez, good enough to join me from Los Angeles. Good to see you. Uh, in fact, I just read, you. Jen, you marked your sixth year of sobriety. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me on the show. Okay. Yeah, January 15th is uh, my sober birthday. A big and day. Uh, I just celebrated... Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's seriously the biggest fight I've ever done in my life. Well, I, uh, let me yeah. let me back you up because I just want to start at the beginning, mm -hmm. just the backstory. Because I know you know, starting from your supermodel days, um, you know, in your late teens, to when you used cocaine for the very first time. Just take me back to then. Well, you know, I took my first drink when I was 12 years old, and I just wanted to feel, my family's from Argentina, and I just remember everyone always celebrating and, and having a good time, and the wine was always on the bottom of the, on the floor, and I just wanted to feel that happy. Um, and when I moved back to America and to L.A., you know, there was a lot of things going on in my personal life with my family and whatnot, and I just wanted to escape, you know, and what happened is now that I, get, I understand it is I have always felt myself so uniquely different, and I never felt like I fit in and um, it helped me cope you know I took that first drink at 12 and around 14 or so I started experimenting with like pot and this and that and at, at uh, close to 18 I took my first uh, line of cocaine and seriously that was what was the greatest love I have had it, you know and I've had to how so? you know it's I mean, a learning process doing doing I don't know how many lines of cocaine what did that high do for you what did it feel like you know, it was that one first line uh, that is the thing that I've been chasing ever since. Mm -hmm. um, it just, it shut everything up in my head. Um, and uh, it made everything quiet and okay for just a minute. And uh, I've been seeking it ever since, you know, and it's like, they say one is too many and a thousand is never enough. I ended up doing like an eight ball at in one night. I mean, that's how my drug addiction took its toll. And uh, I went, you know, I, I, I blew everything, not only on the outside, you know, on the outside, my life still looked okay. I was really great at pretending and acting as if and uh, making you think I was okay until it just got really dark and really ugly. And, um, you know, it was really painful. At the dark place, you know, you end up in this psych ward. And I understand, Jen, you tried to take your own life. I mean, what, what's the last thing you yeah. remember about that moment? You know, I've been struggling with sobriety. Uh, I've been fighting for the last 14 years. I've been in and out of the 12-step program uh, of sobriety. I've had stints of, like, a lot of three days, 30 days, six months. I think the longest I had was about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. in, um, in, and I relapsed on, uh, on Ambien because I couldn't sleep. And my doctor gave me an uh, Ambien prescription. And then it just stopped working. And he said, you know, go ahead and, and take 15 milligrams instead of the 10. And that would make me go into a blackout. And and I would take the whole bottle and that was 300 milligrams of Ambien and pretty much your body just shuts down you go into like a coma state are you and angry at your doctor I, for giving you those drugs I mean do you are you at all frustrated I'm very angry at the doctors I'm very angry today at the doctors especially with uh, everyone you know prescription drug um, addiction is so huge right now it's an epidemic you know drug addiction and alcoholism there, it's an epidemic going on right now and people so there's there's people out there that don't even know that they have the disease and that they're dying and i'm really angry and i told him that i was sober at the time uh 
And it, what Dr. Drew has taught me is that it wakes the beast. You know, I, I can't take that kind of stuff. Uh, and so, that there's other sources out there of things you can take, like a non-narcotic. But, uh, you know, what happened was I ended up going to the drug. You know, you cross addict, and I went back to drinking, and then I went into cocaine again. Mm. And I went into treatment f with Dr. Drew. I went for five days just to shut my girlfriend Brandy up and my mom up. <laughs> and I ended up staying nine and a half months. But I left in there um, in a relapse. I relapsed in treatment. And my dealer at that point had hooked me on, I thought I was buying cocaine, but he was ho he hooked me on heroin, speed, horse tranquilizer, rat poison. Horse tranquilizer he, uh, and rat poison. Were you aware of what you were taking when you were, when you were buying the drugs? No, I mean, no. You, that's the thing with buying drugs and, and drugs today in general is that you have no idea what you're getting, you know, and, and I get a little teary eyed talking about it because Oh, you think, you know, I just oh. wanted to escape. And at that point, I was in such a dark place. And I was so spiritually sick. And I was so physically sick. And I didn't understand why I was, like, nodding out. And why, you know, I was bleeding more through my nose. And, and why it wasn't working anymore. And I just remember being, you know, I kept hearing Bob Forrest's group or Dr. Drew. And it just, like, it wasn't shutting them up at that point, you know. And so, so what the did drugs though? and alcohol stopped working. What, what clicked? How did you change your life? That, my mom and, and my, my family, you know, um, I just knew that I couldn't get sober again. And I, I felt like, wow, I'm not even dying quick enough. So I went back to Los Encinas where I got sober at my treatment facility. And my, the other doctor, not Dr. Drew, said to me, you're hooked on opiates. And I said, what are you talking about? And they tested me and they said, you know, we're going to have to take you to the psych ward before you can go into the chemical dependency unit. And I thought, all right, you know, and I, my mom... Mm. This is really hard to talk about, but my mom and I were talking about it the other day. She said, I just remember mm. six years ago, like, you kicking the windshield. Like, I tried to, I was, like, screaming, like, Mom, please, just take me to go get one more hit. And I had never asked my mom to do that. And that was pretty low. You know, it was, it was pretty low. But um, she didn't do that, thank God. And, uh, and I went to Los Encinas, and they put me into the psych ward. And when I walked in there... I thought, man, this is really dark. And they forgot to take my spike belt. And so I thought, I'm just going to end it. And uh, when I came to, I was strapped up. Thank God it didn't work. <sighs> Thank goodness also for moms. <laughs> and um, Jen, wow. Uh, my final <laughs> question, and I thank you so much for just being speaking from your heart and being honest. Um, if you were to see the, the Jen who was sick many years ago, what would you, what would you say to her? that she's loved and that she she deserves to give herself a break and that it's okay and it's not all her fault jennifer jimenez i thank you so much and truly truly thank you best to you thank you thank you thank uh, you so much we are back in 80 seconds with important advice about your savings and your mortgage stay right there